Hello, my audiophile friends. Welcome to the channel, the Audiophiles y Locos. I hope you're doing well and you have plenty of goosebumps listening to great music in your nice system, no matter where you are. Today, I want to talk to you about something that I've been avoiding for a while because I think it's a complicated subject, but it's uh, my new phono preamp, my reference, which is actually two units from Grahamsley, the Grahamsley accession. This is the moving magnet version only, and the Grahamsley elevator EXP. But let's talk about the preamp first. Accession, accession. What does it mean? Uh, reading the dictionary means access, entrance that it attaches to the record, that it extracts more, maybe. Warren Lavender from Audio Arcan uh, loaned me this unit and he distributes it in Canada. And he sent it to me for evaluation and it, it took me a while, but I, I liked them so much that I ended up buying them. This is a typical almost like do it your, yourself construction the little boxes you know sometimes it's boxes that are clamshells that you can put together although this seems to be one solid piece uh tube um square tube with covers on your side in the case of uh, graham Slee, they allegedly use inox stainless steel to avoid interference from aluminum and it's sound interferences. It's made in small uh, batches. It's sort of exclusive in a way because it's not mass market produced. Some of the interesting features are the different equalization curves. It's got the RIAA. It has an American curve, and the other one says British. I suppose British is for the DECA, London. An American maybe is for Colombia or some other audio engineering standard curves. But some people think that all those curves were really non-existent. Um, I think before stereo, maybe, but after stereo, pretty much everyone used RIAA. So this is more kind of like a tone control. It can be thought of it that way. It, it cuts off the treble with some settings. So you can use it to shape it and uh, fit it to your system, you know, maybe with your tweeters if they're too aggressive or not aggressive enough. It also has a mono switch, which is very important, especially if you want to hear very old records. Uh, so if you listen with a stereo cartridge, a mono record, it would sort of um, turn your needle into a mono cartridge by canceling the vertical compliance. And so that helps eliminate some of the vertical compliance noise. So maybe you may or may not know, but mono cartridges only sweep side to side. Um, a stereo does vertical and lateral compliance uh, registering. So the stereo cartridge is going to be looking for signals on the vertical plane too. And it just makes more noise. That's why it's good to have your own mono cartridge. Although if you have the switch, it does a similar, similar job. You also have a volume control, which is very useful to use it as a preamp. Uh, so if you only have like a playback system with a record player, you can connect it directly to an amplifier. And you can use it that way, in the most pure way. But also it's great for archiving, for digitizing, because it has a variable 
and if it's output. One goes to the preamp, but the other one goes to my TAC, uh, Tascam 3000 digital recorder because then I can control the input uh, to the recorder so it doesn't saturate. It's happened in the past when the output from my phono preamp was a little bit too high and it was saturating the input on my DA3000. So this is good for that. You can control the output so you can get the right voltage into your uh, A to D converter. Well, something else I like very much is that it has a CA flat button, which basically eliminates all the equalization and allows you to get a flat signal so then you can apply the curves on your computer. There are apparently places online, including Gramsley, they can help you find programs to equalize post-recording. Why would anyone want to do that? I don't know. It sounds complicated to me, but there are companies that make software for this. And you can do your own digitizing with all kinds of curves and uh, equalizations. And that allows you to just put out like a, like a camera. You can put the, the signal in the, in the raw format. And then you can edit it post-shooting. And then you can give it the color or the sound that you want. That would be equivalent to the photographic uh, metaphor. It's good for people who are really into recording, archiving, or doing needle drops too. Very useful connections. It has a nice earth connection. It also has adjustments from 100 to 300 picofarads for capacitance for moving magnet cartridges, since this particular one is only moving magnet. But it's useful because uh, some moving iron cartridges like Nagaokas are hard to match in my experience in the past. I used to complain about my Nagaoka cartridges, but maybe it would have been nice to try with this uh, capacitance settings. Maybe I didn't have the right kind of uh, equipment to use my Nagaokas of past. Both units come with a very nice power supply, very substantial, well made. It's made in England, uh, solid construction. It's not one of those little uh, Walwarts from the Far East. Uh, standard connector, thin, three pins. And I think you also have the option to buy a more elaborate power supply in that shape from Graham Slee. That's very typical of British components that keep adding boxes like Cirrus and Nime and Mission and Lin. But to have a separate power supply, you have less noise. Same with the Elevator XP, also has a separate power supply. And the same kind of construction, except this is only a transformer. And the advantage of this particular transformer is that it's active. So in this case, you're not relying on, on magnetic uh, transformers where you might have home and all kinds of noises with passive transformers. They're very susceptible to magnetic fields, uh, the passive ones. And so they, they can have home very often. You have to orient them in the right north to south. And um, uh, But uh, other problems are like in my experience that passive transformers can have slow bass or they oversaturate on the bass sometimes. And this, by being solid state and active, uh, it gives you very fast pace and almost no noise, non-existent noise. So why do we need uh, a step-up transformer? It's to amplify the signal of a moving coil cartridge, which is very, very low. So if you buy a cheap 
phono preamp or a step up transformer that's not so good uh, in, in order to amplify the moving coil signal it also adds noise and hiss so this guarantees you good amplification with very low noise and the advantage of this one is that you can do the changes on demand on command in real time in front many of them other ones you have to remove the covers and uh, use all kinds of mini dip switches which is kind of a pain in the ass especially since I have many cartridges I have a big collection of cartridges so for my big collection of cartridges it's great for those people that have big collections like me so you can make very small changes on demand real time and listen while you do the switch changes these are the only controls that you have the only thing you have to do is to connect your turntable directly to that and then from then the output goes into the phono preamp so this is just an amplifier for the moving coil cartridge and then the preamp can apply the curve the equalization curve it's well made simple although I do have a little gripe which is these buttons are a little bit uh, they feel a little flimsy and loose there's a little bit of play in them they're not gonna fall off or break but they just don't seem very firmly planted they work and you're not going to be switching them all day long but I think it would be nice if it felt a little bit more solid but they work an interesting thing about this company and the designer is that he alleges to have made a complete different system and of course I don't understand it and I cannot explain it to you because I'm not a NASA scientist but I think I do understand some of what he's saying on his uh, white papers on his web page he explains it uh, so I encourage you to go to the website and check out their uh, theory but what he says is that uh, supposedly it applies the equalization in two separate stages it first equalizes the cartridge and then then it applies the signal based on the cartridge what he's really saying is that a moving magnet cartridge has a variable amplitude so when the frequencies go up the volume goes up so there was a lot of treble there's more output and when there is bass there's less output because of resistance so it's not easy to amplify those levels so he applies a curve at 45 degrees so then it compensates for the loss of gain something like that all right but you can check it out and maybe you can explain to me and uh, and write in the comments what I miss I know that he says that it's different and uh, another thing that he says is that he uses the best op amps which are sort of Y band class A JFETs and I believe I believe him one of the big differences to me between a tube phono preamp and a solid state is that the the tubes usually have a bigger image and the base is warm but the advantage of of transistors is that they're high speed and clarity the problem with transistors is that many times they sound like op amps so they can sound a little uh, frigid or cold and the disadvantage of tubes is that they can create noise and you lose detail and you lose tone quality but you have speed clarity and impact of a component that is class A that doesn't produce any noise and you get a three-dimensional image you're listening to something without any interference or any curtains in front I don't want to use the digital word cliche but it does sound like you are in essence listening to something digital and I mean in the best way kind of like the original 
tape because there's no tonal interruptions. It's a direct sound. I prefer tube phono preamps because they sound more organic and music just jumps out with those kind of phono preamps tubes. But, but the Grahams seduces you with the transparency, uh, clarity. If you listen to Vivaldi, the seasons, if you want to hear the ensemble or do you want to hear separate sections, you want to hear the second violins, or you want to see how the... Or you want to hear how the bass player holds the bow, German or French style. You're going to hear so much detail that you'll know how the bass player is holding the bow, French or German style. But you're definitely going to hear more detail and generalizing. But in the case of the Graham Slee, yes, there's more clarity. There's less noise. The bla backgrounds are blacker. The only disadvantage versus my Tavish design is that in this one, the image is a little more conservative. It's not as buoyant. It's not as colorized. But it sounds good. It doesn't sound cold, and it doesn't sound like op amps, which is what I'm always trying to avoid. I try not to put op amps, but it's my prejudice. There are good op amps. There are many good op amps out there. Um, companies like iFi and others, they, they manage to make good products with good op amps. But you can also get this funnel preamp for moving coil if you want. The advantage of having the moving magnet is that it costs less, it's under $1,000, and you can always use it with a step-up transformer. It could be a passive one that you already have, or an active one. I also have the Pre-Pre from Steve Verger, or the Elevator EXP, because I think they match very well, very convenient, are very compatible. And the price is not ridiculous. Imagine if you have to buy those things in one box with the power supply inside. It would be expensive and it would probably produce more noise for the quality of sound that you're going to get. The Graham Slim Moving Magnet works well with my cartridges like Shure 97 with the Gico stylus, my AKG P8 SE, and also my uh, LP gear being 323. Very quiet. So then if you want a quiet phono preamp with transparency, speed, and a very attractive sound, I highly recommend it. And even more so if you're into archiving and digitizing. As a matter of fact, there is a channel by Bob Wood on YouTube where he uses these products to do his needle drops. And you're going to be impressed with the quality that he gets uh, out of those recordings. So I'll, in, in the description, I will put a link to his page, Bob Wood, where you can hear the recordings that he makes. Also, in my channel, TR Space PD, I've made some some needle drops on my channel with this phono preamp too. Highly recommended. It works with any moving magnet cartridge. You're going to get a beautiful sound, precise. And then if you want to add the moving coil cartridge, you can always get the elevator EXP. And then you have the option to use both moving magnet and moving coil. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to hit like if you think I deserve it. And subscribe if you think I did a good job. You can leave a tip on my other channel. Buy me a coffee. 
or you can also join Patreon on my other channel where we have a Telegram chat that's pretty hot and Patreon members have some advantages that I won't mention here. They only, only they know that. But thanks for watching this and take care you guys.